Okay. I have room. I can get Gus right here. Uh, it's like a, an ABBA video. <laughs> That's an obscure reference. I don't know if anybody will get that. Okay. Well, let's go to the Bible. We're on Genesis chapter 34. And Guster, I think you're ready for your close-up. There's Tiny. Okay, let's just read. Kitties, you, you ready to listen? Okay. Genesis 34. Now Dinah, the daughter whom Leah had born to Jacob, went out to visit the daughters of the land. Shechem, son of Hamor, the Hivite, chief of the country, saw her and took her and lay with her by force. Being strongly drawn to Dinah, daughter of Jacob, and in love with the maiden, he spoke to the maiden tenderly. So Shechem said to his father Hamor, Get me this girl as a wife. Jacob heard that he had defiled his daughter Dinah, but since his sons were in the field with his cattle, Jacob kept silent until they came home. Then Shechem's father, Hamor, came out to Jacob to speak to him. Meanwhile, Jacob's sons, having heard the news, came in from the field. The men were distressed and very angry because he had committed an outrage in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter, a thing not to be done. And Hamar spoke with them, saying, My son Shechem longs for your daughter. Please, give her to him in marriage. Intermarry with us. Give your daughters to us and take our daughters for yourselves. You will dwell among us, and the land will be open before you. Settle, move about, and acquire holdings in it. Then Shechem said to her father and brothers, Do me this favor, and I will pay whatever you tell me. Ask of me a bride price, ever so high, as well as gifts, and I will pay what you tell me. Only give, thee me, give me the maiden for a wife. Jacob's sons answered Shechem and his father Hamor, speaking with guile because he had defiled their sister Dinah, and said to them, We cannot do this thing to give our sister to a man who is uncircumcised, for that is a disgrace among us. Only on this condition will we agree with you that you will become like us and that every male among you is circumcised. Then we will give our daughters to you and take your daughters to ourselves and we will dwell among you and become as one kindred. But if you will not listen to us and become circumcised, we will take our daughter and go. Their words pleased Hamar and Hamar's son Shechem and the youth lost no time in doing the thing for he wanted Jacob's daughter. Now he was the most respected in his father's house so Hamar and his son Shechem went to this public place of their own and spoke to their fellow townsmen, saying, These people are our friends. Let them settle in the land and move about in it, for the land is large enough for them. We will take their daughters to ourselves as wives and give our daughters to them. But only on this condition will the men agree with us to dwell among us and be as one kindred that all our males become circumcised as they are circumcised. Their cattle and substance and all their beasts will be ours if we only agree to their terms so that they will settle among us. All who went out of the gate of his town heeded Hamar and his son Shechem and all males, all those who went out of the gate of his town were circumcised. On the third day, when they were in pain, 
Simeon and Levi, two of Jacob's sons, brothers of Dinah, took each his sword, came upon the city unmolested, and slew all the males. They put Hamar and his son Shechem to the sword, took Dinah out of Shechem's house, and went away. The other sons of Jacob came upon the slain and plundered the town because their sister had been defiled. They seized their flocks and herds and asses, all that was inside the town and outside, all their wealth, all their children and their wives, all that was in the houses, they took as captives and booty. Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, you have brought trouble on me, making me odious among the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites and the Perizzites. My men are few in number, so that they, if they unite against me and attack me, I and my house will be destroyed. But they answered, Should our sister be treated like a whore? Ooh, okay, that's the end of Genesis 34. Wow. That's pretty um, intense. Intense. Biblical. Okay, let's just, we can um, think about all that. <laughs> I mean, you know, reading the Bible and, you know, you, you read that. It's like very real and raw and, you know, I can't imagine like what a, de you know, a little devotional on that passage would be like. I don't, I don't know. I'm sure there are many, but I don't know. I don't know what to say. That's rough. Okay. Well, let's read Matthew chapter 26. Henny. What do you think? Matthew 26. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, As you know, the Passover is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest whose name was Caiaphas, and they schemed to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or there may be a riot among the people. While Jesus was in Bethany in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, Why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Truly, I tell you, Wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and asked, um, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? So they counted out for him thirty pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the festival of unleavened, unleavened bread, unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man. Oh, Guster's blacked out the screen. What are you doing, Guster? Okay. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, 
Okay, so he, he replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says my appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him, one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, even if I'll fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I, I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father... If it's possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed. My father. If it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he, found, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. 
Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for a sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father and he will, we will, he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance, right up to the courtyard of the high priest. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and declared, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look now, you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you? Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway, where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I, I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately, a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word of Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Okay, that was the end of Matthew chapter 26. Whew, I tell you, it's kind of stressful, <laughs> both those passages. Oh, I don't know, there's just so much conflict and, well, tragedy really, but of course we know the end of the story, so it was all prophetic and had to happen that way so that we could be redeemed but it's intense hmm well may God enlighten us as we journey on through the Bible and um, 
A lot of conflict in the Bible. But a lot of hope, so we're also in this story, in God's story. Right, Henry? You know, there's, um, the Bible talks about the book of life in heaven and other books. <laughs> uh, uh, there's a book of remembrance and, yeah, well, the book of life, book of remembrance and other books that will be opened. All that to say, our stories are recorded and written in heaven. So whatever you're facing, whatever I'm facing, maybe there's conflict and drama and tension and pain or violence or I don't know what, but you're just in the middle of the story. And um, we know the ending. It ends well with hope and good news, and resurrection, eternal life. And someday there will be no pain, death, or suffering. And God will wipe every tear away. But until then, we have to keep on, keep on keeping on, as they say. All right, that's all for now. God bless. Bye.